we buy or sell the Global Consumer Staples ETF. So first off, read this disclaimer carefully. Then do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. So uh, we do have the ETF here. It is at the 52-week lows. And we are 18% um, away from the 52-week highs. Investing.com has crashed uh, today, so I have to use this instead. But we got you know, the, the most important data here. So this is the chart. Um, this is big picture. Uh, we are at weekly uh, data points. And you know, the bears are very obviously in uh, control. And the thing is that uh, the bears are very ferocious. Um, there's been a lot of opportunities for the bulls to form lows, but then it doesn't happen. Um, the issue is that if you if you do have you know current shorts on, this isn't that much of a problem because you have shorts that are making money, and you know the longs uh, they get stopped out. But overall, it works. But it is very difficult to put on new short positions when, when we have very low RSI and we are abnormally away, far away from various moving averages. What is interesting when it comes to this ETF is that that double bottom worked out temporarily. Uh, you could make the case that we have this double bottom that could, uh, could form. It's an opportunity at least for the, the bulls. Um, Notwithstanding that, you know, uh, the bears are very obviously in control. When we look here at RSI, we are at very low levels, uh, abnormally low. Uh, usually it doesn't work out that well for the bears. Um, and notwithstanding that, the momentum is definitively in the bears' uh, direction. Uh, when we go here to the daily data points, uh, then we can see that very recently, uh, well, for some time now, the bears have very easily shorted uh, this purple 20-day moving average. Uh, very easy place to put on uh, shorts. It was a very important moving average for long. So back here, as you can see, you could just buy it and usually you would have made uh, money. So the 20-day moving average has flipped from bullish to now uh, very much so bearish. Uh, the problem again, though, for the bears is that this is an ongoing and very mature uh, bearish uh, trend for the CDF. Could it go lower in this one fail one swoop? It's possible. But when we look at the trend, the major longer term trend for this, uh, this ETF, we do clearly see that it has these time cycles. The time cycles have differed in duration, but the trend is quite clear. After uh, substantial pullbacks, we usually see uh, a mean reversion, a rally. In this case, I write that it is oversold, um, but we do have a 20 daily moving average resistance, very clear uh, resistance. Uh, another thing is that you know we do have that double potential double bottom. Uh, double bottoms have worked before, but overall it's definitively a mess out there. Well, let's look at the seasonality. So uh, let's start here with you know the shorter term uh, picture. So to the right here, over the last five years in green, seven years in blue, and ten years in red, we usually see some bullish, you know, seasonality into late October than weakness. Looking to the left here, we do see that October is a, is a, overall, it is a weak month. Now we can see here to the right that uh, the gains usually are given back here heading into the end of October. So October is messy. And November and December are some of the strongest months. Over the last uh, 10 years, October is not good, but November December and also January are pretty decent. Then over the last, the last 17 years from September to December, uh, the seasonality becomes more and more uh, bullish. So the seasonality is definitively, you know, favorable here to the bulls. Uh, let's look at the fundamentals, uh, comparing it against uh, the S&P 500. Uh, year to date, it has actually outperformed the S&P 500, losing 15% versus losing 
uh, the beta is uh, 24.5 versus 21.7. The yield is 2.34 versus 1.22%. So there's better yield, but not spectacular yield. Uh, consumer staples, at least the underlying stocks, some of them have good yield, you know, much better yield than this ETF. So here you can see the components. Uh, if we go a bit further down, uh, yeah, the sector breakdown is, you know, predictable. Market cap, you know, a lot of, you know, huge uh, whales in this uh, space. I will give the fundamentals here, um, I give it a three in favor of um, the, the bulls. Uh, but it's, there's nothing really like, special here uh, no, no, because three is you know a bit lukewarm so here is investing.com relative performance and uh, i have this invalid symbol error uh, overall here uh, across uh, all kinds of securities on investing.com so it has crashed today but we can look at relative performance nonetheless the key thing here is to just uh, compare uh, against the various uh, alternatives. So now I am comparing uh, the global consumer staples ETF against the S&P 500. Uh, we do see a bit of a trend change here. Uh, this looks like a rounding bottom in development, uh, which is uh, bullish. It means that there's some signs that uh, global consumer staples are outperforming uh, the S&P 500. When we go to the daily data points to peek a bit at the seasonality, uh, that's overall bearish for the global consumer staples. Now let's compare the global consumer staples against the XLP, which is uh, the more US specific uh, state consumer staples ETF. In this case, we can see that global staples are just systematically underperforming the XLP. Um, maybe some signs of a very early rounding bottom here, but nothing really to um, to pop the ch champagne about. Uh, still very, very, very early. Yeah, when we go here to the daily data points to look at the seasonality, yeah, it is just basically bearish here all the way into early November. Uh, looking at the chart here, there are some signs of a more even battle between the bulls and uh, the bears. Uh, because if you look uh, here, in, like, this is very clearly bearish. Obviously, you know, bears are very much in control. In this case, it's more shuffling sideways. Uh, that is obviously not the same as, you know, full bore bullish uh, trend change. But there is a change. Um, seems like uh, the sellers are subsiding a bit. Could mean that we have some rotation into global consumer staples. Uh, I give the bulls a three here on relative uh, performance. Uh, there are some interesting signs here, uh, especially against the, the S&P 500. Uh, but you did have this clear underperformance versus uh, the XLP. But we end up with a 3.5 in favor of the bulls. Uh, we are oversold. We do have a double bottom that could work. But we do have this very clear 20 daily moving average resistance. It is super easy for the bears to, to short. Um, then again, we did see the time cycles. So usually we see some uh, mean reversion. Uh, the geopolitical situation has definitively deteriorated. So uh, there's that. Um, which is not bullish. So uh, we have some time left. Uh, let's go through some charts of the stocks within the uh, consumer global consumer staple CTF. First on the list is PG Proctor and uh, Gamble. Um, yeah. So here again, we do have this um, double potential that is double bottom here. Pretty clear. Does this mean that this will become a double bottom? No. But it's an opportunity here for the bulls. Uh, there have been many opportunities that the bulls have screwed up. But 
it's sort of like when you see that it's sort of like you know with basketball when you see that one team is holding on to the ball um uh, you have to assume that they are temporarily at least are in control now the bulls they have the ball they can screw it up obviously but i have to have a bullish assumption here given that we did stop at the double bottom but like in a basketball game it is whether they score or not is completely contingent on the next steps. They need to go up. If they lose the ball now, closing below the double bottom, well, the left side of the double bottom, then that's the double bottom is ruined. Here we have the daily data points. Yeah, in this case, you can see that the bears are just shorting and shorting the 10 day moving average. A very easy way to put on place to put on short positions and uh, the bears they keep doing just that okay let's now look at cow that is the coca-cola company um, so what is interesting here i think you can see it yourself here on this weekly data point is this red 200 week moving average it's a huge 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 deal we aren't there yet we are very close uh, to testing it uh, you see here that the week that just was uh, we did go down there and the bulls they did buy i do uh, this is this is interesting uh it's at least a place here again on a uh, major consumer staples where the bulls could do something here are the daily data points looking at rsi here on the bottom we are emerging from a level that is rare previously you know way back here in september of 2021 it did form a major bottom here is walmart another very major consumer staples and here again we have the red 200 week moving average and it is holding uh, the bulls are able to buy it to buy and you know stop the sell off at that level um if we zoom in a bit here and look at the upper end of the wicks and we see that the bulls have tried to go higher without being able to close higher uh, if we go here to the daily data points yeah, it's, it's messy because we have the red 200 day moving average, clear resistance. The green 50 day moving average is also resistance. Uh, then again, the blue 100 day moving average is support. So the situation here for Walmart is a bit messy. Here is cost co uh, weekly uh, data points. And here again, we have a major indicator in play, a major support, well, potential support level. Uh, you do see that the previous time here uh, that we tested the blue 100 week moving average, we dipped a bit below it. Um, then the following week, uh, the bulls were able to, you know, come to the rescue. We, ha we have a similar situation this week. We did close below, so the next week is a huge deal. So here again, there is an opportunity for the bulls to form a low. Here is Unilever PLC, a huge, uh, huge staples uh, company. In this case, this chart is, you know, rather uh, bearish. Uh, we have a clear rounding top uh, pattern. Um, and it's a bit messy. Uh, we recently lost a bunch of horizontal support uh, levels. Uh, trading view is also a bit of a mess. A lot of I think that some of the technical issues I have faced is related to a Windows update. Uh, because I had a major major Windows update, uh, it looks a bit different. So uh, I think that might be the trigger for all kinds of stuff. Okay, so we have looked at you know the KXI. Now we have looked at the underlying, some of the underlying components. There is an opportunity here for the bulls to form a low. Um, maybe it just is a temporary low, but there is an opportunity. So I am going to assume that given that they have the ball in their hand at this point, that they're going to make a play. That doesn't mean they will score, but I just have to assume 
that, you know, those holding the ball, they have an increased probability of scoring vis-a-vis -vis those who do not currently hold the ball. It makes perfect sense. But uh, the Bulls have screwed up a lot of opportunities now. Um, so there's that to take into account.